Let's talk about Angela Rayner because it's, oh, it's piling on that pressure. Look at the mail on Sunday today. House sale document that could nail Rayner. That's right. The neighbour who called the Labour deputy an effing liar. Oh, dear. Talks to the police as we reveal she signed key papers in two homes round. Now, if you remember, Angela Rayner, council house raider, lived in two houses. Well, she claimed she lived separately from her partner, right? And the... Well, uh, do you know what? Let's go back. Let's go back to when all this happened. She married her partner, right? And then didn't move in with her partner. She lived separately. So that when it came to selling her house that she owned, that she'd bought off the council, because she said that it was her principal residence and that the place of her husband was somewhere she didn't live, she just visited now and then, she wasn't subject to paying capital gains tax when she sold it. She got a 25% council tax discount because she was a single person allegedly living there and uh, a couple of other things besides. Fine. Now, the Mail on Sunday have obviously been looking into this for weeks and weeks. They found neighbours of her husband saying, well, hang on, no, she was living with her husband every single day. She was going to work every day. She was coming home from work. Then the Mail on Sunday found social media posts of her at her husband's house, not this principal property, um, the, the, this husband's house, and the social media posts were saying, oh, look, I've just arrived home. Oh, look, I'm cooking dinner at home. And the home was her husband's house. Now... They've spoken to the neighbour and found the document from the house sale, right, of the house that she claimed she was living in. And the neighbour was the next door neighbour of her husband. And so the male are asking, well, hang on, why didn't you ask one of the neighbours next door to the house you were selling? Why were you asking the neighbour of the house where you said that you weren't living to sign the document as a witness of the house sale. And bearing in mind this is the neighbour that was calling her an effing liar, um, it doesn't look good for Angela Rayner. She, she still denies that there's any kind of impropriety, any kind of tax fiddle. She was always living in this separate address to her husband. Because, again, who doesn't get married and then live completely separately from their partner? Completely normal behaviour. So it's all a little bit odd isn't it? And of course, the pressure is mounting on her. Now, people are saying, look, it's a non-story. But when there was a police investigation into the Conservatives, you know, Boris Johnson, the big Randy buffoon and his parties he was having, Angela Rayner was very quick to say, look, quick to say, look there is a police investigation. You've got to resign. You've got to stand down. You've got to be suspended. But she's not. So they found this document from the 20th of March 2015, the Land Registry Transfer of Title, and the witness is the lady that lived next door to her husband. And as I said, the male is saying, well, why did you have her sign it? If you were living in the house that you were selling, why didn't you go to one of the neighbours there? Now, I mean, is this a little bit of a tenuous link? Is this story running out of steam now? Um, if Vicarage Road, which was the main residence, was not her main residence, she could be liable for tax on the £48,500 she made on its sale, exposing her to a liability of up to £3,500. That's aside from the council house discount, sorry, council tax discount she got as a 25% uh, discount for being a single person so they've examined this transfer of deed but the neighbor as i said i'll quote the neighbor if she says she doesn't did, wasn't living there then she is an liar she definitely lived at that house she can't say she didn't live there i would swear on the bible to that um this is mrs hampson her name is interviewed on friday by detectives who took a statement from her and she'd been living in that house for 60 years years. She says, I spoke to two detectives. Uh, Ms Rayner was living here from 2010. She definitely lived there from 2010. She was still there in 2014. She was living here. I used to see her go off in her car, then come back in the night time. If that's not living here, then what is? 
The pensioner recalls Ms Rayner's eldest son, Ryan, living in the loft bedroom and making a lot of noise on his drum kit. She said, my son came home from work one night and asked Ryan to stop it. But uh, so Ms Rayner is facing intense pressure. Oh, and the other impropriety that she's alleged is, of course, the electoral side of things, because if she was on the electoral roll in one house but not living there, that's also a big boo-boo. So it's not looking good for her. Stephen in Manchester has called about this. Morning to you, Stephen. How are you doing, big cuddly bear? I've not uh, talked to you for a long time. How are you? <laughs> I'm your... Of course I'm your big cuddly bear, Stephen. You are my big cuddly bear. Listen, <laughs> the thing is yes. about this, Yeah. you can't only just be a shoplifter. You can't only just be a, a drink driver. If she's done something wrong, allegedly, you yeah. use that word now, then it doesn't matter whether it's 1,500 quid or 5 million quid. It, it's wrong. Do you know well, what I mean? I, I agree, but a lot of people are saying that the amount is a pittance and actually when you look at the owners of the Does mail that, that are looking into this story... Though? Well, hang on, let me just finish. When you're looking at, you know, the non-dom status of the Prime Minister's wife, those are millions, huge sums of money. This is a single mum who might have screwed a little bit of money out the system... And so they're not comparable. What would you say to that? I don't like uh, the non-dumb stuff with that. And they got caught out and fair enough and stuff like that. But, look, you can't compare... Um, who's the dude that got done for five million quid tax evasion, not tax fraud? Um, well, there's, there's tax avoidance and evasion. Evasion yeah, is the fraud. Evasion, avoidance is the... Like the, not, the doing a, not doing the proper thing. Yeah, the, well, there's quite a few. I mean, just take your yeah. pick. But uh, I think it's well, avoidance that's the one that is legal, but is uh, people consider to be immoral. You can't you can't just be a shoplifter, can you? You either are or you're not. And if you've done something wrong, then look, listen, I'm not going to have a pop at her personally. I think what she's done is amazing. To you know, if you look at her background stuff like that, Christo. Um, it is, but if and, you are uh, someone who costs, if you've done something wrong. You can't, like, now Now they're going on about, um, well, she had a kitchen done, so that might, um, come on, man. This is like pushing the uh, ticket a little bit too far. The thing is, you've either done something wrong or you've not. It's as simple as that. Stand up and get on with it. You, you know that. Well, I, I, again, I don't think as well this would be considered avoidance. It would be considered evasion. Because if you're saying you were living yeah, somewhere and you were not, that's, about, yeah, that's evasion. Christo, they're now talking about, like, throwing in, well, she had her kitchen renovated, so that would then... Um, offset the some of the, phone, the tax. Yeah, it'll upset this. You're thinking, come on, man. You've but then the phone, why the would they... See, the kitchen thing is interesting, because why would they be bringing up the kitchen thing? Because they're looking for a way out, Christo. Yes, I know that, but, but, but the thing is, again, I, as someone who owns rental property i'm sort of aware of these sorts of things and the only time that repairs on that property become relevant oh, i'm talking to clement attlee now aren't i, yeah, I mean you you're, you've got your labor head on haven't you i've got my you labor my, i've got every head on Listen, no, 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 but Stephen, let me just say this, because right, right. If, you, if you live in the property, right, if you, it's your main residence and you do the kitchen yeah. up and you sell it and whatever, then then it's your main property. So the kitchen is irrelevant how much you've spent on it because there is so no what, tax. What happens, what happens if, what happens if the neighbours go, actually, she wasn't living there, I mean... Then Not you're basically. liable to capital gains tax, but then the kitchen becomes relevant. So I don't know why they're bringing the kitchen oh, into it, unless they're admitting she didn't we, live we there. Got rid of a prime minister over cake. No, that was cake. over. That was over. That was more than cake. Oh come and, on, and Stephen. By the way, by the way, the current prime minister was there eating cake. Well, they're because so, they're all I mean, a bunch of still, of, of liars. But B L A L L S, isn't but, it? Really? But, come on. But Boris Johnson was. A liar because he was claiming he did not know what well, the rules was, were. Well, we're not going into that. What, we knew he was a liar. It was not over cake. It was not over cake. It was about rules that he mate. implemented. The, is, the current prime minister was there eating cake. By the way, he got a, did he get a fine? I don't know. I think he got one fine as well. But it was different. Boris Johnson was 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 different. Boris Johnson lied so repeatedly about so many things, and the one thing that got him was. The, the cake. It's, it's all absolute utter pants, mate. But you're you right, they're all it. awful. I, I mean, they're it. all absolutely the dreadful. The thing is, if she's done something wrong, 
stand up. The fact that Benny the Bull, um, K Starm is, uh, he looks like Benny the Bull, that top cat, doesn't he? Right, he's, mm. he's he's like distancing himself from it. Tells me that she's look, toast. She's toast. She's toast, mate. She's right? toast in her new kitchen. You, you can't you can't go around asking people to resign, calling people scumbags in the houses of parliament, like she did and stuff like that. And then all, and you know what? Do you know what the biggest hypocrisy is? The, the biggest hypocrisy is she bought a, a council house. A husband, I believe, I'm saying allegedly because I don't want to say anything get you sued or me, bought a council house. Then she turns around and says, don't buy council houses, it's absolute trash. Get lost, a bunch of hypocrites. You know it, I know it, end of Christo. Yeah, but then campaign. you can't you can't just um, claim that she's a hypocrite. They all are. They all are. They all are. Yeah, look at what's going on in Fylde now with that lunatic in Fylde. How did he even get, like... Um, Come on, man. Well, let's not we're crack that the, one open. But listen, Stephen, thank you. Oh, by the way, Stephen, quick question. Yeah, uh, it, uh, as long as it's not geography. History, well, it I is sort that. of geography related, actually. Are yeah. you planning on going on holiday this summer? No. No? You're not, not planning a little trip abroad? No. Why? No, I don't like flying, Christo. Uh, well, do, you know what? do you know what? Let what? me do an advert for England. Listen, anyone wants a holiday, go to North Wales... Or the Lake District. It's beautiful. You'll have so much fun there. But what you might not have is sun. I mean, I do love the UK. You're absolutely right, but you don't you get sunshine. You don't get sunshine, Christo. Come on, man. You don't get... You're not guaranteed sunshine. Oh, well, well, you go to, to I Greece... In, I want skin cancer in about 13 years. God. Go to the Lake District. Go to Scotland. I don't go want to, rain. So I, I want beautiful. sunshine. I, I want scorchio. I want sunshine. I want to sunbathe. I want to sit on a beach you, you, with you a know, cocktail. You know I love talking to you. I always call you the big cuddly bear, and you are, but you're way off the map here. All right. Buy, buy Britain. Go on holiday to the Lake oh. District, to Scotland. Stephen, I don't want to fall out with go, you. I don't want to fall out with go you. Go to Pit Lockery. Go to Pit Lockery. But you, you may as well, the way you're going on, you may as well join Just a Poil. Thank you, Stephen. That's Stephen in Manchester. He thinks we should all holiday in the UK. I mean, he's got a lovely point. The UK is beautiful. I love the Cotswolds. I love going down to Somerset. I've never been to the Lake District, but I would love to go there. I love North Wales. Beautiful part of the world. But you don't get the weather.